Greetings, welcome. I'm Stephen from Stephen C Photography, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of using the masking tools in Adobe Lightroom Classic. The, the masking or the masks is something that people tend to avoid. They think that it's very, very complicated, um, something that's um, too difficult to, to get into, but in actual fact, it's very, very easy. And I'm going to show you in this very short video how easy it is to use the different masks on different photographs in Lightroom Classic. It's important that I'm mentioning Lightroom Classic. I'm not using Lightroom CC here, which is a little bit different to, to the original Lightroom Classic. So in front of you, you've got, uh, I've got, um, what's it, uh, seven, six, seven photographs. And I'm going to go through the different masking options. That's all I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be worrying about all the other editing features. I'm just going to be concentrating on the masking uh, features in um, in this photograph. There is one there where I see there's a skew horizon, so I will, so that's a bugbear of mine, I will straighten the horizon on that one. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into it straight away. So this is the library view, and when you want to use the masking view, you need to go over to the develop module, uh, which brings up your photograph into the full screen for the develop, and the masking tool is this circle with the, the, the dotted line around it on the right-hand side of your, your tools. So the first thing I want to do is go along and click on the masking tool, and then what's going to happen, it's going to bring up some extra op uh, uh, options for you. You've got something which is a, a subject. In this particular case, in this photograph, there isn't a strong subject, so I wouldn't use that one. Um, I could use sky, and I'll show you about that. And I could use, well, maybe not background, because background and subject tend to go together. When there's a strong subject in your photograph, you can select the background, and I'll show you that as we go through. Also underneath here, you can go along and choose objects. You can choose a brush. The, the brush option is uh, basically where you choose what you want to use using the brush, like a paintbrush, a linear gradient, which I'm going to show you in this photograph, and radial would be that you create a mask which is circular and then under the range one you can also choose a different uh, luminance range or a different color range so you could go along for instance let me start off by showing you if I choose the color range and I say okay I want to select everything that is blue and there you can see that it has selected everything which is in that color range that I, I used the drop before to, to tick I don't want to use that in this particular case so I'm going to switch that off and I'm going to go back again and say reset the photograph so that we get rid of that mask. So now we're back in the develop module I'll go along and I choose the uh, the masking tool and I say the one that I am going to use to start with is I'm going to select the sky and the algorithms in Lightroom now are very very clever to understand and work out where the sky is and you'll see that the the sky area will go discolored. Now all I need to do is if I change anything on the sliders, you can see that the the sky changes. I'm basically changing the um, the exposure of the sky in this one, and the sky will go up or go down, get darker or lighter as I change it. You can work on any of these as you go. You're basically doing the editing now as you would do in a normal edit, uh, normal develop mode, but it's using just the the sky. In this case, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to leave the sky as it is. So the sky is there. Let's pretend that we've maybe made it a, a little bit brighter, add a little bit of contrast onto it. But now what I really want to do is I want to edit this foreground in the front, and I want to make just the foreground lighter. And I can then go along and say create a new mask. And then it brings up all the different options again, and I want to choose the linear gradient. So now the linear, linear gradient is that I basically drag up from the bottom. I'm using my mouse to drag up these, these lines from the bottom. And now that area that is discolored, that is the area which is now going to be edited. And again, I'll go to the sliders, and you can see there I'm making the, the foreground, the shadows, a little bit lighter. Just giving it a little bit more texture. I can add in a little bit of uh, contrast to it as well. Uh, you can go along, you can play with the, the temperature, you can make it warmer if you want. All those uh, options that are normally available to you in the develop module are now available to you, but only on that area that you have selected. So there I've made the foreground uh, uh, look a little bit brighter, giving it a little bit more of contrast. And I click on the, the masking tool again, and that then sets us back into the develop module. And now when I move any of the develop module sliders, 
the only thing that uh, it's changing everything in the photograph, not just the, the bits that are masked. So that's really what I'm showing you there is the sky option, the sky mask and the linear mask. Let's go on to the next photograph and see which ones are available to us in the next photograph. So this one as well, um, probably going to be the same. Um, if we go along and choose uh, again to the masking tool, and we choose the sky, and let's see if it selects the sky, we could maybe make the sky a little bit darker there. So it's going through the algorithm. So there we go, the sky is a little bit darker. I can maybe add a little bit of warmth to the, the sky to make it more of a sunrise, bring down the highlights on the sky. And maybe not too much, always want to do just a little bit. And then I can click on the, the masking tool again to switch it off. If I now go along and edit, you'll see that the, the shadows, if I bring up the shadows, that rock in front there comes out and you can edit uh, and change the, I brought out the Pretty much the, the water, the splash over here, that's brought up a bit brighter. Something that's irritating me here, and I'm just going to deviate a little bit of these reflections, which are basically the sun bouncing off my lens. I'm going to go over to the clone tool, make the circle bigger, and I'm just going to click over there and remove those. So that's something extra in the in Lightroom that can do. All these tools that I am using and showing you now are available, and I show them in, in detail in my Lightroom course. And so I am sharing this with uh, people in my Lightroom course. If you haven't done my Lightroom course, uh, it is available where it's a, a full overview of Lightroom Classic, basically from importing until exporting and everything in between, showing you all the tools that you have in Lightroom, including the, the masking tool that I'm showing you here. Let's move on again to the, the next photograph. So here we've got a very strong subject. We've got a sky and we've got a foreground. So let's go along to the masking tool once again. And let's choose and click on the, the subject and let's see if the, uh, there we go, it's actually very chosen, the horse and the, and the lady riding the horse. And now if I move the, the tools, you'll see that uh, I'm changing just the, 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 basically the subject there. So it's been clever enough, the algorithm has been smart enough to select just the, uh, the tool on that side, uh, just the, the subject on that side. Uh, there isn't much that needs to be changed on that, but you can see what happens uh, when we do that. I can also go along and say create a new mask and choose select sky. So now you'll see that it selects just the sky and then I can go along and I can change whatever I want to do, change in the sky. I could even go along and bring the saturation all the way down and remove the, the color from the sky completely and we've got a black and white uh, sky in that case, which I, I won't, won't do on this particular one. But there we can make it a little bit brighter, make it a little bit darker, bring down the highlights, change all the things. I could go along again and say create another new mask and I can say select, uh, let's go along and say select the background. And what's going to happen now is that it's going to select everything, the sky and the foreground over here, but it's going to leave out the, the subject. So that's a really good one because now I can go along and I can make the whole photograph darker but the subject still stays uh, as it was beforehand. So that uh, selecting the background is a very, very good option in the masking because it selects everything except your, your person or the subject that you have chosen. So that's the subject and the sky and the linear ones that I've shown you there. Again, we click on the, the masking tool and it switches it off and we can move along to the next photograph. So there you've got a person in this photograph. Now watch what happens when I click on the masking tool. If we look down at the bottom over here, it's now saying it's detecting people, which is, uh, once again, the, the algorithm, the, the smart AI, some people say, of it actually detecting and seeing if there is a person in this photograph. Once it has detected the person, still going through and, and checking all of the photograph, I can click on that person, which I've done now. Now what it's doing is detecting the person's features. So at the moment, it's a, uh, I've clicked on the entire person, but I can go along and say just the, the person's face, and that will create a new mask, and then anything that I do, just the person's face, in this case the little boy's face, will change. You can see there what's happening there. I'm going to extremes here just to show you what uh, how these masking tools work. You can go along and, and say, if we click on the, the first mask, and say add a mask, you can go back to people, and again it will 
show us the, the person and it'll give us the, the clothes, the hair, the lips, the irises, the eyebrows, the skin, whatever it is that you want to do. We can also then say, let's just do the entire person and create a mask for the entire person. And there we can actually make it a little bit brighter or add contrast, add a little bit of shadow or tape down, whatever it is that you might want to do in that particular case. I can then also go along and say, select the background. So now it knows that we've got a person in the photograph and it's going to select everything except that person. And then once it's got that, we go along and in this photograph, the background is a little bit bright. So we bring down the highlights, bring down the exposure and you can see how it's changing it there. And again, you don't want to go to too many extremes. Um, you want it just to be very subtle, rather get the photograph correct in the uh, in the camera than to do too much editing with it afterwards. This particular photograph I prefer to a, a black and white scene. So in Lightroom you've got black and white where you can click on black and white and immediately your photograph is uh, at, at black and white. Let me show you how the brush mask works. So over here we've got quite a bright area. So if I go again to the, uh, to the masking tool and I say create a new mask, and I say let's use the brush. Now what's going to happen is that everywhere I paint with the brush that is going to be the area that is going to be selected. So I've painted all over this area over here and then anything that I do, any sliders or anything that I use, just that area will change. You'll see there that the, I'm making it a little bit darker there. And you can see again, I'm showing you the extremes of what I'm doing. But you can see how just that area that I selected is then changing. And let's take that back. We don't want to go to too much, uh, too radical extreme there. And there, I mean, you and I can probably see now that I have made some changes there, which uh, distracts a little bit from the, uh, the person. So you could then also go along and think, oh, that doesn't work go back to that uh, particular mask that I, I chose and let's just find which one it is and that is that one over there so then we can go along and say let's delete that mask it's mask 4 and deleted it so then that will uh, come back to what it was before I started on that mask so it's almost like uh, when you go into masking it's a it's almost like a sub layer within Lightroom that you can then work with as if you're working in the develop module but you're just selecting particular areas in that in that particular photograph. Moving on to the next photograph. So this is going to be an interesting one here. And the reason I've chosen this photograph, let's actually just correct it up a little bit. Uh, let's just straighten up the background. Let's crop it a little bit so that we get rid of that image in the background and on this side over here. So also what I'd normally do in this photograph, I would also use the clone tool. I'm not going to spend too much time on it just to remove this line at the background and also remove the, the switch that we've got over on this side. Now we can just use that tool to go down there and you'll see that those areas will, will remove. But I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I just want to do the mask. In this case, what I want to do is I want to select the background because I want to make the background a little bit lighter. So I've clicked on the masking tool and there's the background and watch what happens now when I click on the background. So it's busy analyzing the, the people in the photograph and analyzing the background and the background then gets selected. But if you see what's happened, the certificate in the front, Lightroom hasn't distinguished between the background and the certificate. So now if I want to make the background lighter, by bringing up the, the whites or bringing up the exposure, you can see that the certificate has also changed. So let me just take that back to where we were. So now what I want to do, because the certificate is part of this particular mask, I want to go and I want to subtract just the, the certificate from the mask. So I've chosen the option there, it's like a sub-option called subtract, and I'm going to go along and I'm going to use something called the object and that will give us a circle. Now that circle I'm going to put over the certificate and Lightroom again is clever enough to understand that I am selecting just that certificate that has also done a little bit extra amount, made the, the circle a little bit too bigger. So then I can go along and choose the, the add an object to it or add using the brush 
and let's make the brush smaller on this side. We've got the size over here, and I can just brush a little bit around the certificate. Let's just go that way. There we go. And now I can go along and I can change the background and you'll see that the background changes, the certificate doesn't change, and that stays as it is. Bring up the whites maybe. Bring up the shadows. You could do whatever you want. Again, you don't want to do go too, too extreme because then it looks like the person's been pasted on top of the background. It's going to look a little bit um, as if it's uh, been edited too much. Um, on this side over here, there's quite a bit of shadow on this side, so we could go along and choose the the masking tool again and choose a linear gradient and we could bring a line linear gradient in from that side and then we can make just that area a little bit brighter try and balance it out with the, the rest of the uh, of the photo off in the background other things that need to be done on this uh, let's just click on the masking to close it off we've got uh, a hook in the wall over here so we want to get rid of that then, as I said, we'd like to get rid of the, the lines there as well. What I wanted to show you there, though, was how you can add and subtract areas using the, the object tool once you've selected the background. Move on to another one. So here we've got one of a, of a person. Clearly, it is a, um, the, the person is the, the main subject and very strong in the photograph. And we can go along and we can choose again uh, click the mask in and it goes along and says detecting the person and we could go along now and edit each little piece of this person go along and edit the teeth and edit the eyes and edit the, the clothes and edit the face because that gives us all the different options that we've got so there's the the mask that uh, has come up and it's basically selected the person now it's determining the different features and there are all the features that we can go in. as I scroll through these you can see the selection that has been made so instead of me going along and doing each one piece by piece, I could go along, I mean, it's so clever, go along and choose the teeth, and then say create a mask, which is only the teeth, and if I then go along and say, well, let's make the teeth a little bit whiter, not that they need to be on, on this model, but there we go, you can see how it actually makes it a little bit whiter. I'm going to reset that though, and I'm going to close down this mask, because what I want to show you with this photograph is something on the left-hand side they are called presets. So with Lightroom, they give you some adapter, they call them AI adaptive or adaptive presets. And over here where you see the word adaptive, that is using the masking tool, it's using the AI masking tool. Before I go into that though, something which is just begging me is this little bit of a reflection on the lady's nose over there. So I'm just going to use the tool, um, which is the, the clone tool, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to remove that. And that looks much, much better to me. So coming back to the left-hand side, these are presets in Lightroom. And over here, we've got something called adaptive uh, portrait presets. I can go along and say, let's give this portrait a gritty portrait. So all I do is just click on that. And now what, the, what Lightroom is doing is using all of its masking tools to create this grit, what it determines to be a, a gritty portrait. You'll see that uh, there are changes if you go up to the masking. Once it's done, you'll see how the masking. You can see that it doesn't work in this particular case. I don't like that gritty portrait at all, and it's not one that I often use. If I go along and click on the masking tool, you can see the things that it has changed. I'm going to go along and I'm going to, on the keyboard hit Command Z, and that is then just going to remove that gritty portrait. But let me go along and use the enhanced portrait and see how that works. And if you watch on the the, uh, the photograph, pretty you'll see that the skin smooths out, the teeth have come a little bit whiter, and the eyes have really popped. So the two that I use often is the enhanced portrait and sometimes the, the polished portrait. And again, once we do the polished portrait, it's now going through edits. We can go along and we can see, if we click on the masking tool on the right-hand side, you can see all of the things that it has changed just with that one click. So that's pretty cool that, uh, that Lightroom Adobe have given us all of these different presets over here to, I mean, even if somebody's got a beard, you can click on darken beard, darken eyebrows. And it's just basically gives you a one click instead of going through all the masking tools. So if you have this Lightroom version, it is the latest version that I'm, I am using, all of these tools are available as, um, 
uh, as presets and they're all using the masking tool. You'll see over here something called Adaptive Sky and I am going to show you how that one works as well. Let's move on to the next photograph. So there's, we've got the one where the horizon wasn't straight. So I'm just going to crop this a little bit. I'm going to move the horizon to get that straight. And now we want to look at this photograph and say, well, okay, the, the subject in this photograph is, needs to be lightened a little bit. So I can either choose the subject or I can choose the, the background, make the background dark and then make everything lighter. So let's go along and let's choose the, uh, the subject or the person. Let's go along and detecting the person and let's see if that one works better. Again, we don't want to be too hectic with these. You can adjust it too much and then it doesn't look real. So it's busy uh, detecting the person's features. So it's done that and I'm going to say create a mask of the entire person. And now I'm just going to bring up the, the light a little bit on the person, bring up the shadow a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to click on the masking tool and then I'm going to go across and I'm going to say give it a polished portrait as well. And there you'll then see that the it's again detecting the person and it's going to go through and do a uh, basically a good portrait session of that uh, changes of that person. And there you can see the difference in that photograph that has really changed it quite a bit. And that is the how the masking tool works. And as you can see, it's, they're all pretty pretty simple and easy. They're not uh, it's not something to be scared of. Um, it's the uh, really really easy. And I think it's often people are just you you just want to get used to it and, and use it as much as possible. I want to show you, if I go back to this photograph of the, the blue sky, where we can go along, and these are some, I do use these presets a lot, but uh, quite a bit, but they are, you need to be selective in using them. If I go along under adaptive sky, I can choose blue drama, and you can see what happens with blue drama, so it's going through all the different settings now of the masking tool, and it's changed that, and I mean, it might be, you might quite like that. Oops, I zoomed in a little bit. Let's just zoom out. And you can see how it has changed the sky there. It's enhanced the rain cloud that is coming over on that side quite a bit. We can go along and choose the dark drama. Let's see what that one does. So basically, well, that's uh, a little bit over overemphasized. I can't say that I like that. It looks a little bit gaudy. It's uh, not, uh, not great for me. Go along and say storm clouds. That could be quite interesting with so many clouds in the in the photograph. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so it's done a little bit there. So maybe the the blue sky one in this case might actually work the best. You have also got sunrise and sunset. This one was taken at sunrise. So let's see what happens if we click on sunrise. So what Lightroom is doing here is doing all of these settings for you. You can go along and you can do all of this on your own, but they've built it in as a preset, which really works very, very nicely. Um, if you think that you're in the neon, in the, in the tropics, you can use the neon tropics one as well and see what that does for you. And let's just change it up. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, that might work. You could then play around and go to black and white and see how that works in black and white. And so you can go through and play with all of these uh, different settings on the using the masking tool and all the other tools. Right, so that was a very quick rundown of the masking tool, really, just to, to encourage you to get into the Lightroom course and to, to get going and just to understand that it's not a difficult thing. That the, it's very, very easy. You don't have to always use the masking tool. It's there for the specific areas where you do want to increase and change your photograph just a little bit. So thanks for being here. Let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.